All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are back to game number two of UCLA versus UCSD. That's Los Angeles, the Bruins versus San Diego, the Horchata. The Horchata. That's well, interesting fact. That is actually their college mascot is a uh, is a mason jar of horchata. It's 2017. Your mascot doesn't need to be an animal anymore. It can just be something tasty or by something that my co-caster considers untasty, so to speak. <clears throat> a community college in my area, their mascot is an artichoke. Is it really? It is because the uh, they got a big grant for educational stuff and they spent it on a new athletic building and everyone was super pissed. So they oh. uh, there was a vote to decide the mascot. So like, fine, you're an artichoke now. Screw you. <laughs> All right, most of these bands are looking the same, except for this Enchantress. That uh, is not too surprising, is it? I don't think it is. Vengeful Spirit uh, band was banned last game. Same with the Nick. Same bands coming out of San Diego. Ten seconds remaining. And same bands coming out of Los Angeles as well, with the exception of that Enchantress. I think Carlton said that his cat just threw up in his shoes that he was wearing, so he's going to be a minute. But um, San Diego, yeah, there's not much that they. I feel like they need to worry about right now. Um, maybe just stick with the same bands that they did before. They did the Tiny. It'll be the Bane this time. The Tiny could get through from Los Angeles if they choose to go for it right here. But this uh, this day and age, the picking order seems to be pretty consistent. You're five and four, you're three and one, and you're two. Or maybe with some swapping with the two and the one. Ooh. UCLA going to pick themselves up a Beastmaster. Carlton, you all done? You all done? You get that kitty barf out of your shoes. Uh, Winter Wyvern is not very unexpected here. He is someone that we has been seeing a lot of play recently. Uh, he went from virtually useless to uh, back up in it. Ten seconds remaining. Hi, Carlton. Hello. Did you get all the cat puke out of your shoes? What happened there? You, your cat puked in your shoes and you had to go clean it up, I heard. Is that what happened there? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yes, I did. That is exactly. <laughs> well, I'm glad you made it back. Did I leg out? Uh, you did something. I definitely couldn't hear um, you. On my end, you did. Well, <laughs> mystery will never know the solution to. Well, now that we're back, I'll ask you the same question I asked you when I was go cleaning my shoes. Do you think Beastmaster is a first pick priority? Do you think he's a great hero? Do you think he's first pick worthy? I know that there was um, 707, he, like, 707A, or vanilla, or vintage, whatever you want to call it. He was gross, and he ate heavy nerfs following that. So he's a little, he's still very strong. First pick, I don't know. Like, who's really, who's really, there's no really a must-have first pick these days anymore. So really, you know, anyone can be a first pick. Definitely. Yeah, I, I'm picking up what you're laying down. What do you think about a first pick winner wyvern who get winner wyvern who gets countered by an ancient apparition though second pick? That's not entirely surprising that the winter wyvern was picked up. Um, as I was saying, he's seen a ton of play right now and he's he's in a pretty good spot. It does well, kind of suck to to eat an AA blast. It's it feels really bad. This is one of those games. You know, Invoker is banned already um, by UCLA, but that's another classic one. Like they get a winter wyvern and you just get your your invoker and they cold embrace and you're just like okay i'm just gonna sunstrike then yeah that's that is it's just sunstrike just does so much damage it really is just rough to deal with especially winter wyvern's a cold embrace it already feels bad enough to cast it's so it's 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 such a delicate spell where you can use it and you think it's gonna be good and it ends up just hurting more than it's helping getting invoker out of the way even though it was from ucla not from ucsd does feel good making it harder for it to feel bad to cast that spell but it does set up for the ice blast from ancient apparition 
Yeah. It's One thing weird. I'd like to point out with Beastmaster, just briefly, is that, yeah, he did see a lot of nerfs, but he still fits the same role, where if he's if he hits you with his axes, you can't man fight him. And so he still plays his role. He's just not going to play his role in a way that makes it so it's impossible to lane against him and he farms everything and takes all your towers in five seconds. Yes. Yeah. And, <laughs> back, back on the Winter Wyvern, what I was going to say is um, the it's really easy to tilt, like sort of not necessarily tilt. That's not the right word. But um, to get inside a Winter Wyvern's head, especially with draft, um, this ancient apparition is a perfect example. That Winter Wyvern the first time that he cold embraces someone and then that person gets nailed by an ice blast and dies after that, he's going to have such a hard time using that skill. Cause he's going to be constantly like, not sure if this is right. If this is a good time to use that. Mm hmm. Yeah. It's, it's just, it's hard to feel good casting cold embrace. Uh, sometimes it feels great though. So going into this next game, uh, I'm a little bit, skeptical about this UCSD draft. I actually None... like this Phoenix pick because if Winter Wyvern, if some, if he's using Cold Embrace, they want big magic nukes and magic damage, right, to get through it. Um, but if they if they get to, if they, like, get a Zeus or something like that, someone who's really good at doing that, um, what are they going to do against the Phoenix? Like, one requires right click, the other requires magic damage. Um, Fair it enough. It can be really easy to um, just put someone like that that zoning stuff that they did last game i feel like they're gonna rely on that heavily this game again definitely the phoenix we saw last game and the zoning was excellent it caused it just caused chaos throughout the fight do keep in mind beastmaster offers an attack speed aura which means anyone around beastmaster as long as beastmaster is near the egg is not gonna have too hard of a time hitting phoenix obviously they still do have to deal with uh the combo from phoenix and um uh, Winter, Winter Wyvern alt, as well as dealing with a Death Ward hitting hitting them with Phoenix Egg up. But what I'm worried about, and what just kind of got my question just answered itself with that CK pick, is with Winter Wyvern, with Witch Doctor, and with Phoenix as the first three picks. These last two picks, the position one and the position two for UCSD, are going to have to be the frontliners. The cores are going up first, and they're against a Beastmaster and an AA, which is a bit rough because those heroes combo together and can just destroy someone. But CK is a great example of a core who wants to be in the front line and who can who can be that that wall that protects everyone behind him and lets them get their spells off. And especially with a Witch Doctor who has a long duration channel, CK can buy Witch Doctor the time he needs to rip people up. But as we've seen with CK in the past, sometimes CK doesn't need anyone to buy him time when he gets some lucky crits and just kills someone in one W cast after Phantasm. It's something that Golgi and I were talking in the last game, but um, the Medusa was already picked, so I don't I don't expect that we're going to see it here. Um, but I really like the Medusa Ags upgrade, and it has a really great interaction with Chaos Knight, where one single snake and all of his illusions are gone. Period. Just gone. Yeah. It's the the Medusa. We saw Sumail do it recently in a pro game, and that's, I think, I would assume where likely a lot of people got inspired by it. It's just, what are you supposed to do? <laughs> what are you supposed to do against that Wyvrex? You can't really do much. Medusa throws the snake and everything just goes downhill from there. Yeah, and She just the, slithers right on up to your Ancient. With a Beastmaster on their team, they don't combo that poorly if they were to pick up the Medusa. Um, there's still stuff like Anti-Mage. Like, they've got the pick right here, and then they've got the bands for Anti-Mage. Invoker's already out of the pool. Um, they, don't, I don't see the best ways in dealing with it, but... That could be a very long game. Likely, if the Medusa gets picked up, I'm going to assume it'll be fifth. What I'm worried about... So what I was worried about for UCSD was a lack of frontliner. CK is definitely part of the remedy to that problem. Because again, Phoenix, Witch Doctor, and Winter Wyvern kind of want someone to be in front of them. UCLA is lacking on damage. Obviously, Beastmaster can put a bunch of bursts, but when, when things get rough, Beastmaster's not really a hero that's in there auto-attacking. He wants to sneak up, he wants to get his burst damage out, cast all his spells, and he's not really going to be in there just man-fighting with people too, too much. However, a hero that can get right up close and personal uh, faceless Void, as well as the classic Chronosphere into AA Blast. Hello. I don't know. You know who makes Faceless Void really sad? Who makes Faceless Void really sad? Winter Wyvern. Yes. Yes. There's 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 a lot of counterplay going on in this game. I think we're going to see what we saw last game, where the very first team fight is going to determine a lot in this game. And I'm I'm already I'm honestly we're only. Eight out of ten heroes, four heroes for each team. I'm already excited for that first team fight. I think it's going to be great. 
we, the Earth Spirit pickup too is not the most common pick uh, in the CSL games, at least the ones I've been casting. So I'm excited to see what they can do with it. I'm uh, that is actually my favorite hero in the entire game. Fun fact about your boy Carlton. The Earth Spirit is. It is. Oh, are you watching last series? Because we got a, a double. Or no, actually, I think we just got him in one. Uh, but we oh. got we got to see some more Earth Spirit today. Good just stuff. having him in the game. Oh, hello, oh, sniper. Snippy sniper. Okay, they are gonna go fragile mode. Okay, okay. I mean, if UCSD sniper does get have a diver here. Obviously, the storm is already out, which I think was great. A great ban there. What? Mm -hmm. What are you? Th what do you think? UCSD. They someone who can get on top of that sniper likely for this core. Mm, weaver. No, not the weaver. Not a weaver. Mid. Yeah, probably not the weaver. <laughs> I don't think that's likely. So um, sniper. It's not the 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 biggest run at them lineup in the world. Mainly Beastmaster, Void, and Earth Spirit. A little bit in the early game are get going to get up close and personal. Sniper doesn't have the greatest line of defense, but you can obviously see the combos here with Chronosphere and Sniper just beating on I people. With Earth Spirit setting up for Sniper and with Beastmaster setting up for Sniper as well. I think they're going to go maybe a Zeus uh, to throw Nimbus into the face. Ember. Okay, Ember can get back there on the Sniper. Uh, Ember also is susceptible to the uh, control. It, he, Very much so. Earth Spirit loves to play against Ember Spirit because of how quick he can throw that silence out if, if Ember Spirit gets roared. The thing the thing that I really like about UCLA is that only all they need is one person to hit their spell. And obviously there is the cold embrace to save, but if one person hits their, their control spell, everyone's going to be able to hit their control spells off of it. It's going to be a nice and easy combo. And I I love I love it when teams pick dra uh, uh, build drafts that are easy to execute where they just need one thing to go right and all of a sudden everything goes right. It's not the best example of that from UCLA, but I do like Earth Spirit hits a spell, he's going to set everyone else up. Chronos uh, Chronosphere gets hit, sets everyone else up. Beastmaster Roar sets everyone else up. And I I, I I'm a sucker for these drafts because I feel like when when it gets down, when people start, if someone panics or if if there's a, a fast reaction time the UCLA draft is going to have an advantage in those split-second decision moments. That isn't to say, though, that UCSD's draft is not fierce and ferocious. Yeah, I'm just looking at UCSD, and they've got... I, I, they've got the damage, right? If they catch anyone, they're just going to explode them. Um, but it's still... Yeah, it looks like it's a bit of a rough road ahead of them here in the early game up until... Um, Chaos Knight gets some higher levels and some items, and Ember Spirit, he needs to be able to farm. He needs a lot of map. map I ability. think the Chaos Knight is going to be the, the what we should be keeping our eye on here for UCSD, because if he can get his quick armlet, he's both going to be difficult to deal with, and he's going to be able to make space to get Ember Spirit those uh, items he needs to get into the game. Because apart from that, uh, Winter Wyvern, Phoenix, and Witch Doctor, they just need levels. They don't necessarily need the items to be too effective, at least for UCSD's side. And as always, this is a league game, so we like to let you know who is playing. Here on the UCLA side, it will be Patience on the Sniper. We have Oliver on the Beastmaster. Earth Spirit will be played by the cute Indian guy. Faces Void is going to be played by Triple X, State of the Union. And finally, Ancient Apparition is, of course, RG. On the Dire, UCSD, we have Ember Spirit. The flashy flamer being played by with my strongest period 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 phoenix being played by life is tough another fire hero cooling it down winter wyvern being played by shuabu the enchantress from last game attila in all capital letters is the chaos knight looking to get a an armlet early on very likely and ludomir on the witch doctor and there's an invasion that's what i like to see you ain't invading it's not the game for me now, Carlton, I don't know if you know this, but three periods, you can just say ellipsis. Oh, you learn something new every day when you're watching CSL. <laughs> learn in, in You learn in post-secondary, and you learn in post-secondary league games. That's Part what I love about this league. Participles of speech. Oh, we got an immediately a rolling boulder onto with my strongest. He's not having a good time here. The They're going for the is double. come out, and they'll get him. Oh, boy. That. They just are letting him know, hey, we're not going to let you do this today. I love it. Look where Earth Spirit's standing. Don't you dare try and get a lane of my sniper. Just standing there. And the Iron Branch. 
Iron Branch and a Tango already used. That's a 50 gold. 50 net worth. Play right there. Maybe you can burn the branch. And that's what our spirit does. 50, 50 mana on roll for 100 damage, and he's going to get an auto attack with an orb of venom. It's just efficient harass. Power spike, level 1. Bottom lane, Beastmaster might get dove. So, no, he got chains out onto Sniper right now. He will be able to throw his shrapnel and buy himself some time. But now, well, look at that, Sniper. What do you got? You got one tango left? Yeah, that's not going to be enough, buddy. Both mid players really just struggling with the regen and the health department. Looks like the supports are going to come help. They immediately dive out of bottom and smoke up. All of I like Attila. this. They probably aren't going to be able to do much here. And we're ready to the go. The smallest. The cask should be leading it out. It's going to come right yeah, onto the yeah. creeps. There's the cask. Oh, it's going to bounce so much. Oh, that was hurtful. Ooh. We got a rolling boulder coming oh. in. But with all these supports here, I don't think he's keen on staying around. And Ember Spirit actually went for the to roll the dice there to see if the chains would hit, and they did, and he gets a last hit because of it. I like it. Took a risk, it paid off. That's going to give him an early lead on the sniper. Not the biggest one in the world, but a lead nonetheless. Supports are going to move on down. It looks like Beastmaster's not too scared about this solo lane against the aggressive CK. Which is fair, because if Beastmaster hits you with an axe, there's no way you're man fighting him. Action packed already. Earth Spirit picks up level two. He's just gonna go head on back mid, try and hit some daylight rolls. It looks like. Oh, roll forward onto with my strongest once again. They've got the shrapnels going out, and now they've got boulders from the level two Earth Spirit. Oh. They will easily be able to get that kill. The chains are doing a bit of damage. Shuabu is here to try and get some revenge damage out, but he's got to be careful. Oh no, Ancient Emperor goes down in the top. Meanwhile, another roll. Shuabu's caught in the river. His Arctic bird oh, ran out yes. just on the edge of the cliff, and he got shoved back down. Action-packed and scrappy. That's what I like to see. Yeah, top lane, the double stun. CK, Witch Doctor, that's rough to deal with. Cask sets up CK for Chaos Bolt and Reality Rift. Not much you're going to do there. Returning to bottom lane. Ancient Apparition taking some damage, but Phoenix is in a rough spot yeah. as the Icarus dive. Oh, getting stunned up. One more. Can he do it again? Right clicks. Come on, buddy. Right clicks. Oh, the last right click hits and he will just dive out. Not lucky enough. Lucky, but not lucky enough. Sniper. 16-3 and three to Ember Spirits. 14-1. and one. We've seen a lot of action mid, but both mid players are still managing to get the farm. CK. Actually, 14 last hits. He's doing all right. None of the cores are really suffering too much. Does look like the Phoenix, though. Actually, four last hits total. That's, that is rough. That is rough. And let's go back. Ember Spirit has his hatchet. Trying to compete with Sniper. Laning phase started out quick, slowing down a bit. Earth oh. Spirits don't like this. So oh, they don't really RG offer too much to lane. bounty rune taken right under his nose. Oh, top rune though. Yeah. Sniper doesn't want to show up. Uh-oh. With my strongest. Oh, taking quite a bit of damage. Now here comes the shrapnels up in front with my strongest. Could be okay here. He's got his wand if he could pop that. No. Oh, he uses his chains. And here comes the bottle. He's got the wand as well! You can stay alive, buddy! He goes down finally while Beastmaster dies in the top yeah. lane. Three heroes, Witch Doctor, Winter Wyvern, and Chaos Knight all ganged up and took that Beastmaster down. Maledict and all the other fun spells. Not much he could do. He's a beast, but he's also been mastered. Phoenix and AA just fighting bottom lane. I love it. AA actually pretty decent in lane. Especially with the Chilling Touch, level 2, Cold Feet level 2, that's the fight build. It hurts. That's it the hurts get out of my end. lane. It's frosty. It bites like some frost. Winter Wyvern looking to set up some wards. Four heroes in mid. Might see some action. Earth Spirit rolling around. Going to get scouted by this ward and by the Winter Wyvern. Oh, he's going to have to roll. Oh, Winter's Curse. He's got to be careful. Now he's going to start getting chased down. Do they have another shrapnel? They don't. And they Sniper just gets scared it. off. Yeah, it's because with my strongest is going aggressively onto him. 
With my strongest, needs to be really careful. It's just quack, quack, quack in this mid lane. Don't do it, don't do it. Here comes the boulder. Oh, he jukes him to the side. He's got the bottle buying himself a little bit of time and he makes it out. Just fighting the winner. Wyvern. He's actually creating a lot of space. If he doesn't die here, let's go really well. Don't go. Okay. Oh, boy. Oh, if Sniper was a little closer, he could have gotten assassinate out onto uh, Ember Spirit. Oh, that would have been wonderful. Beastmaster just chasing a Witch Doctor. I mean, this is great. This is space. Regen rune top. Let's see who can claim it. Phoenix gets pushed out bottom. Faceless Void, top farmer in the game. That's good news because Faceless Void, one of his problems playing him as a core, doesn't have any ability to farm. You have to pick up a farming item to stay relevant. So seeing him top CS means he's not going to run into farm problems, at least just yet. We are only six, nearly seven minutes into the game. Man, they're they're putting so much time with Earth Spirit. Mileage in, punches on his guard yep. for he, being here in the mid. They want yep. to make sure that Ember Spirit can't show up here. And he can't. And he's relegated to the jungle. And look at how well that's going for him. And now Sniper gets free farm lane. That's wonderful. <sighs> Sniper loves that. Sniper's just gonna go right up, get those boots first, get those oh, stats. Oh, right, so gonna dive aggressively here into the bottom as lots of damage coming up onto Agree or RG. Oh, a rolling boulder. Cute Indian guy's just on point. Hello. With these rotations finds him, kicks a boulder through him, pulls a boulder through him. And they'll clean him up easy. And Sniper playing against two heroes. Not really being pressured. That's not good. Having to split XP mid Ember Spirit isn't able to really. Utilize his ally and now sniper was two levels ahead now just one they're gonna go on him now though aggressively Yeah, they've got the remnant a boulder smash comes through but ch patience is getting ch uh, Chased down right now. There we go another remnant will get the kill But now with my strongest has to get out of here. He's gonna eat another boulder to the face He is getting slowed up one more shot is all it's gonna take he's gonna try and go for the deny But he won't be able to get it oh, Scared me because AA love any any experience AA gets before level six is a huge deal. Getting a slow level six feels awful on AA. Being there for that XP is great. Beastmaster. Oliver is dead. Goodbye. Maledict plus a Chaos Knight just smacking the crap out of you. Yeah, that's gonna be a bad day. But we did have Oliver deny the bounty rune from Witch Doctor with his boar. <laughs> Hell, a little cheeky play. Roll forward, cute Indian guy. Ludimer is going to be able to catch him with a cask, but that's going to signal that they need to get back. <clears throat> and the TP in for Beastmaster just gets them back to lane. They weren't able to go aggressive. And we have Sniper, Chaos Knight, and Faceless Void all farming about even, favoring UCLA because Sniper and Faceless Void are on that team. Meanwhile, Behind that again, Ember Spirit having a rough time. Go into the jungle. Sniper getting free farm mid. Sniper loves this. Sniper has an... Oh, top lane. Missed roll. But it does bait out a TP and they yeah, see they it. They get a reality rift into the strike from Beastmaster. Oh, the bounce cast back and forth onto Oliver. Oliver has Maledict on him and will go down. Now cute Indian guy is going to channel that TP and he will make it on out of there. Bottom lane. Life, Phoenix yeah, very low. Yeah, so tough is very, very... Oh, he's so scared right now. This poor guy, he's going to get jumped on. They get the Ouch. vision. They get the kill. Now, though, Patience Return. and, and uh, Ember Spirit were fighting it up. He's going to run it on out of there. Ice Blast coming in top, looks like. Ludimer. Oh, he's not going to get hit by this. Little bit late. I, Beastmaster's having a really hard time dealing with this Witch Doctor, and I love this Witch Doctor's build. This is just the fight. I, I hate you, Beastmaster. Leveling up Cask, leveling up Maldict over the Voodoo Restoration. Beastmaster summons uh, a unit and gets hit by a Cask, and you know that Cask is going to bounce right back on top of him. Sniper still just shooting his gun mid, collecting that money, competing with his teammate for top CS. 52 and 19 on Sniper, 50 and 32 on Void. That's some serious denying. Pull trigger, get money. Mm -mm -mm. I'm filming a rack video over here with all the guns and money going on. <laughs> Phoenix, what's he want to do? He just wants to watch Sniper. Not much he can do about it. Oh, there's the smoke on Beastmaster. I would have liked to see this a little bit earlier, but he did TP as a response. Smoke pops. Beastmaster really wants to press his R button. He's rolling around. 
with his Earth Spirit. Earth Spirit doesn't quite have magnetized, so they might be lacking on damage. I think they're going to find... <laughs> yeah. Oh, they're going to kick him. It's over to the side. He is now stuck. Ice Blast coming in, and RG will actually be able to get that Might kill. get Witch Doctor with Assassinate. Yeah, Witch Doctor, Witch Doctor <gasps> is very, very dead. Yeah. They've got the Assassinate on him. Hello. What are they going to do? He Cold uses the Fairy him? Fire, too. Yeah. What are you going to do? Cold Embrace? And look at that mid-tower, actually. A lot of damage on it. So I'm going to leave a Sniper alone, especially with this buff to the Radiant mid, nerf to the dire mid-tower position. Meanwhile, Attila's having a pretty good time of it, though. Yep, and that's one thing we did talk about. UCSD needs Chaos Knight to have a good early game. He actually went for Drum before Armlet. Uncommon, but not insane. Beastmaster's going top with no mana. Does have a Shrine, though. I say this game is looking really good for UCLA. Oh, with my strongest could get caught here if he's not careful. He's going to get stunned, but he gets the root out on Earth Spirit now. Ludimer's here. Roll away. Oh, he's just going to make it out of here. With my strongest. Almost made the play. Top lane, though. Beastmaster. Every time he goes to this lane, something bad happens. He gets cleaned up. Phoenix also lot went of down action. the bot lane, so everywhere. Fights, fights everywhere. Everyone's just scrapping. Tower goes down mid. About to have a tower go down top, though. I'm not sure what they can do about it. Cute Indian guy, he's a pretty skilled player on this Earth Spirit he's shown us, but even this seems a bit ambitious for for him. Mm-hmm. And there's the bounty grab by Wish Doctor. I love it. We start going for the Glimmer Cape first. Great support item, great synergy with his ultimate being able to channel and glimmer at the same time. I'm still just waiting for that first team fight. Drums first on CK, Boots first on Ember Spirit. Not the most aggressive items in the world, but definitely help farm and can help with the fight. Oh, help with mobility. Oh, could get found right now. Uh-oh, 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 uh-oh. Uh -oh. Oh, he's to Hello. the jungle. Hello, wrong neighborhood. Yeah. They're going to find AA and Patient, or Shuabu, will eat an AA blast. Ludimer, if he isn't careful here, he tries to TP. He's getting assassinated. Oh, he almost made it out. Attila is just Ooh. hanging out watching his buddy die. Poor guy. And I think that's it, but they do get the deep ward, and that might pay off. Cyber just going to return to his mid lane, going for the Maelstrom. Yeah, a I position like 5 for, for position 5, but let's be honest. Oh, actually, I was going to say AA is probably um, worth more, but no, it is an AA, so of course he is not worth much at all. Phoenix yeah. is worth, oh, nothing. <laughs> Drone values Poor guy. of nothing. He's just playing against the Faceless Void. He's just destroying everything. Faceless Void going for that Demon Edge there. That is a damage item. <clears throat> Chaos Knight very close to his armlet. Once he gets this up, he can hopefully make some more space for Ember Spirit. Because as, as it is right now, there's not been... Space has been a, at a bit of a premium here for San Diego. Mm. For Horchata. Yes. So what do you think about the Battle Fury Void? Um, he needs something to farm. He needs to... I don't know if they want to take this late against an, an Ember, but... Um... Yeah, Battle Fury also helps deal with CK. It makes sense. I think it makes sense, especially when you're farming that well. I, I always, it's all, I'm always a little skeptical of it just because there's no stats. And this Earth Spirit, just spreading the magnetize. <laughs> Yeah. What a hassle. His alter, uh, his alternate option was like, you know, maybe the Mask of Madness for Inside the Chrono, yeah. but they don't have, um, San Diego doesn't have the best ways, but I think a Death Ward enough might be, a Death Ward might be enough to scare him off from getting that, uh, that Mask of Madness mm -hmm. where he could just be eating shots inside of his own Chrono. Definitely. You don't want to have Time Walk. You want to be casting Time Walk off cooldown almost always, or at least have the ability to cast it off cooldown. I'd say his other item would be a Maelstrom, but we see that picked up by Sniper. I think it makes more sense. Maelstrom on Sniper, Battle Fury on Void. Two items that help them farm. They, they're aggressive items, and they're going to deal with these CK illusions. Witch Doctor. I really want to see some Death Wards going on, but he doesn't have a great way to set it up. He needs to combo it with someone. Chains don't uh, disable completely, just to mobilize. Winner's Curse... You can't take damage from anyone else. Kind of just can be set up with the Chaos Bolt. So it looks like Witch Doctor is really going to have to play positioning this game. Make sure he's not being seen so he can get some good Death Wards. Sniper actually getting pushed out by Ember Spirit. What is going on? This is not what we've been seeing at all. 
Ember Spear is actually topping CS now, but he has been in the jungle, so it is inflated. Yeah, 15 and minutes in. I mean, he's got his BOTs up now, so he's going to recover quick. Yeah. Look at him going for that Kaya, actually, just like the Storm Spirit. As far as net worth, he's only 500 under right now. For the start that he had, that's really good. How do you feel about an Aeon Disc first Phoenix? Uh huh. Interesting. Okay. It's not something we see a lot, right? This is the one. Um, Aeon Disc. Now, does can Aeon Disc proc well Phoenixes and Supernova? Just no, I don't think so. But oh, they're gonna use the Winner's Curse. It's this cast some damage back and forth between Faceless Void and uh, Earth Spirit, but it is just a retreat. One and they will be able to get out of there, so it stops the aggression. Um, I don't know. That seems very strange. Like Aeon Disc just isn't an uh, an item where I've ever been like, oh yes, Aeon Disc. That's sick. That's gonna do it. Maybe it's just because of the passive nature of the item, but I like the flashy plays. Aeon Disc isn't necessarily the flashiest item just because it's passive. Until it's sneaking around with this armlet, he wants to go on the Beastmaster. But Beastmaster has some friends coming in. Oh no, hiding against the Sight Hero. Yeah, here we go. They're going to use the Phantasm, CK. immediately blows up one. Could be trying to go on to Patience right now, once they get the Reality Rift. AA Blast is going to come in, it's going to whiff and won't hit anything. We've got an Assassinate coming out, it's going to hit Ludomer. Ludomer's so low right now, he has to be very careful. Walking into the Strap one now is going to find Faces Void. Runs for his life, but they got the Maelstrom, or the Maledict, onto Faces, he is going to melt! With, with my strongest, blowing up people, uh, jumping in the back line, jumping onto the Faceless Void. And now they could be going to Patience. Patience is getting slowed up. They get another Reality Rift. They could be able to take him here. And this was that first oh, key gosh. fight I think we were looking for. Hello, UCSD. I like it. Even up the score. Armlet got picked up and CK turned it on both the Armlet and the killing power they couldn't stop him we saw what we always see with ck i think it's just hilarious how it never fails someone tries to gank a ck with armlet right on in the early game he uses phantasm and just blows someone up in this case turned up it turned into them taking the entire fight uh ice blast did uh, that was rough not being able to hit the ice blast hit so it right on top of the the ward spot there missing everybody I can't confirm the interaction, but if Aeon Disc procs on Phoenix Egg, that I, that combo is broken. That's really good. Because, that would definitely uh, validate a first pick. Yeah, and even like even if it happens to hit, like they they blow it up, or it happens late, and then his ultimate does no damage. You know, you're still trying to get the stun out. You're still trying to use it as the zone yeah. control and everything like that. Um, and that's a magic that's immunity. That's wild. Stun. Pierce's magic. Yeah, that's very good. But that does require Phoenix to get his egg off before 80%, and that does require this interaction to be real, which we'll see soon enough, hopefully. Yeah, uh, <laughs> this has to exist. <laughs> yeah. Take a look at the, the net worth, uh, just the graph, if you hit the default Y hotkey. Just look how steep that is. CK and Ember, boom, boom, follow close behind uh, Sniper and Void, and then all of a sudden we just have a roller coaster dive down Beastmaster Phoenix and then everyone else on the ground. Happy to have their boots. Earth Spirit ripped it up early on, and now he's fallen behind. Hasn't finished an item in a while. And just warded on top of a ward, an observer, an enemy observer. Earth Spirit and Beastmaster were looking really aggressive here on the top, but they get scattered a little bit and beat a hasty retreat. Meanwhile, Ember... Ooh, CK round two, gank. Oh, he has all his spells. That's gonna be it. Here they go. They get the cold feet onto him. Yeah, he's getting stunned. He is getting Ooh, found. A little bit too found. aggressive. Just a little bit. <laughs> Top lane, going to see a T2 tower get pressured and a T1 bottom. Both also towers are valuable. Give the value, though. UCSZ definitely gets the advantage. They can take this tower. Sniper's by himself. He can't defend this. Yeah, this Never is... Spirit knows it. Ice Blast, Assassinate coming in with my strongest. Ooh, almost took a... Uh... A ball, an ice blast, not to the face, but you know, a little clip, a little drive by on that one. It looks like UCSD is actually backing out, which is strange to me. And now their tier two is getting pressured. Yeah, they're going to the shrine though, they want to fight this. Ember Spirit wanted to go for the jungle camp first, being a little greedy, it might have cost them this. They do see the bird now, but 
UCLA knows they have a, a sight advantage with the uh, here with this ward hanging out. It looks like they're gonna back. Earth Spirit really wants to fight. Doesn't realize he's standing on a ward. In the meantime, oh sniper top lane. Did CK yes, get himself stuck? CK, uh, CK might be stuck. Oh no! It doesn't matter if you've got <laughs> if you've got yourself an Ember Spirit. He yeah. shows up, salutes, and gone. Yeah, and it doesn't matter if you're in melee range of CK. He's just gonna beat you down. And what's CK doing with all this farm? Just holding on to 3,000 gold. I wouldn't be surprised if he just grabs a heart. And if he grabs a heart next, I wouldn't be surprised if he just ends it after that. That could, that, I mean, that's insane. And. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Does Phoenix finish his Aeon disc? What's he doing? No, it looks like he's going for a Force Staff. Or is that a Hood? That could, no, that is a, yeah, that would be a. A huh. Oh well, there goes all the Aeon disc hype. Items even less entertaining than I thought. Thanks, Ice Frog. I think he was just See? trying to get us all, all giddy, all like, oh, what's this going to be? There's the smoke. Okay, so we have a Necronomicon picked up by Beastmaster, but level 1 at 22 minutes isn't the greatest timing. I'm also really They're excited to see these new CK. units. He's going to scout might. it, though. Oh. oh, Oliver, jump into a roar. Here they go, Ice Blast. They're going to commit the Chrono if they need to, but they absolutely do not. UCLA is loving getting these kills on CK. Top net worth in the game. Faceless Void. Actually, not anymore. Faceless Void is taken second behind Ember Spirit, who has 10,000 gold. First to break into those five digits. And they're going to go ahead and take this top tower. I highly doubt UCSD will try and uh, contest this push against a Beastmaster and a Sniper. This tower is very hard to defend unless you're already in position when the enemy team shows up. But in the meantime, Ember Spirit will use those bots effectively and get bottom pressure the bottom tower. <clears throat> Ice Blast coming out. Looks like they want to try and send it bot. Let's have a If this a hits look. cute, no. Indian guy might go in. Mid, yep, Indian guy. Oh. He is in, but not going to connect onto anyone. They do have possibly some turnaround, but Faceless Void still has that Chronosphere. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Going aggressively <laughs> onto cute Indian guy. Uh, it won't burn down very he, low, though. He's cute, but he's not accurate, at least in that engagement. And again, CK. CK's teammates are roaming in. Last, time, last two times CK was alone, he got ganked. They're not going to let it happen a third time. That is going to be a tier 2 claim, thanks to Beastmaster. Just pushing the lane while that excitement's going on. Mm -hmm. Necronomicon aura. Ooh, that feels good. Beastmaster about to hit level 2 Necro. Level, level 2 Necro 24 feels a little... It's, it's feeling better. It's feeling better. Maybe a late pickup for the... Oh, and he has the Blink Dagger as well, which he's been making use of. So keep that in mind, actually, with his timing. Oh, and there's a Lincoln Sphere being picked up on Ember Spirit. Uh, Lincoln Sphere is all one of those those items where sometimes it's a necessity, but I feel it's, it can it, roar. Yeah, I mean, it makes a lot of sense. And there's no, there's actually it, every spell that's gonna break is a good spell this game. To be honest, there, there's gonna have to be an item pickup in order to break it. Maybe a mana burn from the Necronomicon, or a force staff from the uh, AA, who's actually gonna go Glimmer Cape. Yeah, no way to actually break it. Mana, their best bet is the mana burn from a Necronomicon unit. But they did change. They did change the Necronomicon units. Do they still cast a mana burn? Um, no. They do cast purge though, don't they? Mm. Oh, no, no, gains no. purge at level three. At level three, the archer gains it. So they don't actually have. Yeah, the Lincoln Sphere is great this game. I love it. Oh, they've got a ice blast. Are they, oh, yes. Ice blast into the Chronosphere. They are easily going to find Ember Spirit here. Take him everyone down else is behind. Now. Double damage CK. They're probably going to do this. They're, and he has that They're reaver. Going to oh, do this. Oh, in, oh no, in go. Roshan. Oh, right they get scouted, the... though. What's going on? Be careful. Earth Spirit wants to they go in. Earth Spirit a little ambitious in. here. He's going to get found. Phantom has to use. Uh, Attila wants to go in. He wants with the big heavy targets. They're all going to back up, though. Now, they aren't even getting the, the Ember Spirit finally, or Earth Spirit finally going down. And they don't get what much out of this. They might turn fight. around for the Roshan. They could claim this themselves. They don't have an Ember Spirit, and the other team's only missing an Earth Spirit. I definitely think this favors UCLA. And there's nice the Ice Blast. God, look at that Beastmaster army. I just have the back help. That could have gone so well for UCSC, but they just got scouted. They weren't exactly sure. Earth Spirit went in a little... 
a little early, but he did split the team up. I think the biggest thing was Chaos Knight was unable to catch anybody. Faceless Void is just going to start smashing Roshan. And they do have Beastmaster Sight. There's the Mask of Madness and a Shadow Blade on Faceless Void. That's an aggressive mobile build. I like oh it. Oh, boy. The only Did risk being that... They look like they want to do something about it, though. SD? Nope. They're just all moving around the middle. So this will be LA taking that Roche. You see LA really showing they have fight left in them even after losing the first game. Very close game, very scrappy game. I'm loving it. What's Sniper going for? Sniper's actually going straight into the Mjolnir. Maelstrom Mjolnir. He does have a four staff. He'll probably turn it into Dragonlance Hurricane Pike after the um, Maelstrom. That's going to help accelerate his farm a lot with the attack speed with increased lightning. It's going to help deal with the illusions. And he's going to be able to throw the Mjolnir buff on his Ooh, allies. going in deep. He's going to be able to catch two. Now they get a roar onto Chaos Knight so he can't Ice Blast. In. Ice Blast coming in. It's going to hit three. Four Magnetized doing so much damage. They throw the Winner's Curse, but Winner Wyvern is getting chased down by RG. They see him. That's the five-man team wipe. That was a huge what? fight from LA. How? I don't... What? <laughs> that Ice Blast was insane. Sniper just did what Sniper did. He sat on the back lanes. He ripped people up. I can't believe Beastmaster didn't go down. I absolutely cannot believe Beastmaster didn't go down there. And they, I think he was it, lucky it's, to get the roar off onto uh, Chaos Knight. I thought before. I thought he was gonna roar and die. Nope, he's gonna roar and just take the whole fight. I think as soon as Ember Ember was a little too deep, he hit those chains, but the, the chains had already expired by the time his ready his team was ready to follow up, and Ember was deep with with his chains on cooldown. Oh, oh he baited the Chrono. Oh, but it's gonna get Witch Doctor Life. <laughs> Witch so Doctor for Chrono. Go. I mean, it's not the worst. Yeah, and it's oh, and Life So Tough is gonna go down. Patience. So much damage, he throws a boulder. He's so close. Here comes the rolling boulder. Finally, to out. TP out. Oh, boy. That was a buyback on Phoenix. Poor guy. And that's a Rax. That's a Rax. The big boys this are coming up, This is a very though. strong game view from UCLA. And back out. That's smart. Safe. Take what you need to do him back. That's a huge advantage for them. Sniper and Faceless Void monopolizing the net worth, sitting on top of Ember Spirit and Chaos Knight. Quite a lead. Over 2,000 between Sniper and Ember Spirit. Position 2 and Position 3 on the net worth chart. What's our Faceless Void going for next? A Butterfly. Faceless Void is has a mask on. He has a Shadow Blade, he has a Battle Fury, and he's building another sword. Two swords, an axe, and a mask. Very scary, if you ask me. Winter Wyvern just wants to get that four staff. He just wants to be a support <laughs> item. He wants to build an item this game. He wants to get one. Yeah. He's pretty and close. there's some pings coming. UCLA is having fun now. All their players pinging each other. Sniper <laughs> thinks he's Zeus with this Mjolnir rush. Just making lightning. Ember Spirit forced back into the jungle. I remember this from the mid game. Ember Spirit's actually going for a Shiva's. I like it. Survivability has great synergy with his mobility. It's going to make it rough. The thing is, I like Shiva's more if UCSD was winning these fights because it makes it hard for the enemy team to run away. But it seems like UCSD is actually the team doing most of the running here. And here's a play coming in. Shadow Blade being followed by a smoke. Triple X. He's oh, yes. Oh, oh, no. Oh, he, with my strongest, he's going to be able to get out. They'll just take the Winter Wyvern now. Attila finds Oliver in the back line. They're putting so much damage in. There comes the egg, but Matt Faceless Void should be able to get it. He does, but takes down the eight, loses the Aegis, and they get Lightning Blast. Lightning Blast, Lightning Bolt, Lightning Bolt. Attila. Lightning Blast. Attila will go down to all of the Lightning Storm from that gun. It's a gun that shoots lightning, you know? How can you it's not It's a lightning that? gun. And UCSD will call the GG. There it is. I think that's fair. That last fight almost went perfect, but Ember Spirit managed to interrupt the Chrono Cast. A little bit of a delay on Void. Didn't see it coming. I didn't see it coming either. Didn't matter. They were far enough ahead. They had the positional advantage. They knew what they wanted to do, and they still were able to take the fight. Rather, UCLA was able to take the fight. They did great. They, they did great. I mean, we had that first initial team fight with UCSD trying to gank a CK and the classic turn armlet on, blow someone up, turn it into a team fight win. But after that, UCLA, I think I loved the itemization on Void and Sniper, both getting uh, 
Area of Effect items, Battle Fury and Maelstrom, both of them helped them farm so they could stay in the game. They fell behind, but they never left the top five in net worth. And once they started building up uh, items and making moves, they, they combo so well. Uh, Chronosphere sets up everything. Earth Spirit did a great job at level five, uh, of the first five minutes causing pressure. He fell off a bit, but he kept his head, kept you know, he, he kept his chin up, kept his head in the game and did work. But one thing I love was that that T2 fight. When UCSD was pushing the T2 for UCLA, Ember Spirit jumps the Beastmaster. Beastmaster turns around and screams at them. And then they get hit by a three-man ice blast into a wipe. That was a great fight to watch. And that was when the snowball just started getting out of control. And UCLA just started attack moving into the enemy base, winning the game. That was an action-packed game, though. That's the type of Dota I love to watch. I don't know about you. What did you think about the game, Wybrex? No, I think I have to agree with all of your assessments. The final, that one fight where the uh, the Beastmaster got that roar off as he was getting initiated on, that stopped Attila from being able to blow him up, and they mm -hmm. got basically nothing out out of it, and it just held them in place for long enough for the Ice Blast to come in. Nails three of them, fight was over, game almost felt like it was over at that point. Definitely. It did. That was, that was the... That was like the, this could be exactly what UCSD needed. Nope, just kidding. Crash and burn and attack move into the Ancient. Well, there's one thing I know about this game. It's gotten me even more excited to watch Collegiate Dota, and I cannot wait for a Game 3. Which we will go to in just a moment after a short break. We'll see you soon. See you soon.